The Voron enclosure does have some pretty sweet lights. What's up everyone, Chris here, and one of my favorite things about building 3D printers of different types and models is seeing how the designers deal with different types of issues. And the Voron team has been really creative with how they've done things on a lot of their 3D printer models. Now on the switch wire right here, my two favorite things, first one being the key back. This holds the gantry up if the power goes off because it is belt fed. It's really hard to show on the machine because you have the enclosure on, but here's a picture from Hackaday. This shows you how where it's located and how it works. This sets underneath on the back right corner and it goes over a pulley on the top of the frame. And then it hooks onto a 3D printed part on the X gantry. And this keeps tension on it so it doesn't fall when the power goes off. And that is a very clever solution to this problem. My hat's off to them. I would have never thought of something like that. But there's one other thing that I find really interesting on this machine, and that involves the lights on the enclosure. And that's pretty much what I focused on in this video. I've been very happy with the results of the hack that I've done for these parts, and I wanted to share it with you. And here's a look at the part that I'm talking about. It's this very clever light deflector. The LED strip just slides in from the back. You don't even have to glue it down or anything. It just sets in there and you run it all the way to the end and it diffuses the light. I love the design of this 3D printed part and they actually use it to somewhat keep this enclosure together with two pieces of tape. And you can see it in action when we turn it on. It really does help to mix up the light and get it focused where it needs to go. I'm just really tickled with this solution that they've made. And after seeing how clever these parts were, that got me thinking, because I really do like using these spools of LEDs all around the shop, because they're very convenient and affordable, but not always the easiest thing to mount. They do have sticky back tape on them, but that usually fails in one situation or another. And I have designed parts over the years to try to make them easy to use with some success. But could I take this part, maybe make it a little bit larger, and then use it in different applications around the shop. And that's what I set out to do. And the print shelf right here is the first project I want to tackle. Now, I did try to put some of these LED lights just on the face of these boards. I used zip ties, I used the glue back that comes on these strips, but it never really worked out. I linked a strip here for this shelf and one down below together with some wire, and then I have an adapter on the end to plug them in, but they're hanging down, they're loose. I really don't even feel comfortable using them in this condition because I don't want them to ground out on anything. So this is a perfect case where I could use those diffusers, print some bigger ones, and completely reinstall this where it will actually be useful. So I'm pretty excited about that. And because of great open source projects, like all of the Voron designs, I'm able to go in and grab that STL file and change it up to meet my needs. So that's what I decided to do. Let me show you how I got that done. So here we go. Out to the Voron GitHub, we can grab the parts we need. Now, Voron, they do offer all of these parts in CAD, so you can edit them. And I use Fusion 360, and they have those files available. So if you head to the CAD folder, this is the switch wire page. You can use this assembly right here and pull it right into Fusion 360. I have downloaded this whole project, so I'm just going to head into Fusion and open that up. We'll just go into CAD and we'll open the whole thing, the whole assembly. And there's the switch wire, every part you need to build this printer. Now what you can do you can go into panels here, expand it, and then you have your light bar. So you could right click on that and hit isolate. And then you can just work with this part. You can make it as long as you want. You can edit it. It's much easier to deal with these CAD files. But that's way too easy because a lot of times I run into these projects where they don't offer CAD. You just have STLs. So I'm going to show you that way. So let's just close this. Same thing from GitHub, you have all these STL files. The one you want is in panel mounting, and it's this light bar. 
Again, I've downloaded all these, so let's just pull that SDL in and I'll show you how to deal with that. Now, it is a little harder to deal with them and it does take extra processing power, but I think it's going to be more common for me to show you how to deal with an STL than it would be with a CAD file. So let's just go to Insert, Insert Mesh. We'll find our Voron STL file, light bar, we'll open it up. And we're going to kick on Origin. So you can see that it's kind of skewed a little bit. It's easier to deal with it if you get it lined up with a plane. So I like to move it over here. Then we'll just rotate it a bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's easier just if you have a set of marks to line it up with. So we'll hit OK. Now you have a mesh, but you need to be able to edit that. So we'll highlight it. We're going to go to Mesh up here, Modify, Convert to Mesh, or Convert Mesh. Hit OK. When it turns gray, now we know we can edit it. So let's just see how long this thing is. The shelf over there, the gap that I'm trying to fill, is around 180 centimeters. And some of the printers that I have can deal with around 40 centimeters. So I decided to chunk these up into 40 millimeter blocks so that I can use them vertically and horizontally. I just thought that was a good number. So let's see what it is right now. We'll just do inspect measure and we'll just do corner to corner. I have some room to play with so it doesn't have to be extremely accurate. So 239.6, it will give you the sizes down here below as well, but this just confirms it. 239.6, so we need to add a little bit around 160 millimeters to get it to around 400. So we'll deal with that in a moment, but now that we have this body, let's just pop open bodies over here, light bar, we are going to right click, copy, and right click, paste. And the new body is just overlaid over the old one. We're going to drag it down because we want this end to be the one with the hole because we want the holes to go all the way through. So we're going to drag it down and we're going to line it up with the end of the first one. Just overlap it because we want to cut this one down here without the hole and replace it with the one with the hole. So we'll just say, okay, that's good for now. Now we want to split it. And we're going to take the original body, we're going to split that, and then our splitting tool, we'll swing around, and we're going to use the face of the new body. You can see the tool that it's going to use to split, extend splitting tool, hit OK. This is where Fusion usually chokes. But now we have three parts. So we've got the new section, the old section, and then that part that we split. So we can just turn off that part that we split. If you turn off the new part, you can see we're open here, so there's a hole all the way through for our strip. Same way with the new part, so we should be good. Now we can combine these two, so let's come up to combine, first one, second one. So we're good, but we want to make sure that this is cut down to around 400 so we can print it on the printers that I have. So I'm going to inspect measure and I just want to know how far apart these veins are let's just take a quick measure here so 17 millimeters if we do some math 400 divided by 17 so 24 sections would give us just a little over 400 millimeters so we're gonna make our cut right in here so back to split we'll split this body and we'll select the tool that we want to split with. We've cut off this section. We can take off that part. And now we have the light bar that we want to use for our project. Now all we got to do, tools, make, click on it, and we'll save it as an STL. Now we just need to print it. So let's pull open our slicer. This is where having a printer like the Foltertec FT6 comes in handy. It does have 700 in the X. I could have printed them a lot longer, but 400, no big deal. Let's just grab it. And we'll get, let's say, four 
going over there. And we could also do this on the tank. It has a 350, 350 X and Y, so you can put that diagonal. So we'll get one going over there too. We can spin that around and it should fit just fine diagonal on that printer. So now we print. So I have all my light parts ready to go. Again, I did these on the FT6 and the tank. The tank is 350, 350 X and Y. It does one at a time okay. FT6, I did four of these all at once. It takes around 27 hours. I print pretty slow on that machine, but it did a fair job. I also used white filament. This is all PLA. It should be just fine for these lights. And the color should deflect the light a little bit better. So now I'm going to go over to the shelf, uninstall all the lights I have right now, and then we'll feed them into all of these parts. So here's what we're working with. So I took all those old light strips off. I had two strips, you saw that, for both shelves. Uh, I have wired these together and soldered them up. Now, if you were gonna do this from scratch, you wouldn't wanna do this until they were in place. Also, I used the adhesive back on these lights, and that's gonna make it a lot trickier to feed through each one of these parts, but I wanted to reuse these, so we'll tough it out. So basically, all I'm going to do is thread these lights through Piece after piece, there should be six of these pieces on each shelf. Four are going to be horizontal, two vertical, and then we'll do our best to connect them all together over there. And I'm gonna stick them on underneath the shelf with some VHB tape. Be careful on brands of this VHB. Make sure you can get some 3M brand if you can. Some of these other brands aren't that great. But let's see what we can do and pull all these through here. It shouldn't be a problem with the wires. They should slip right through as well. All right, we got it all threaded through. I got some tape on the back of all of them. I'm gonna to try to put it on the edge of the shelf. It might work better inside the shelf, but we'll work that out. I'm gonna go install it now. Uh, again, it would have been a lot better if there would have been some tape on the back of this, or you just did them individually and then soldered some wires to connect them. But I feel better about reusing the lights that I had than getting some new ones. So let's go over there and see how this is gonna work. And we'll turn the lights off for dramatic effect. And... Ta-da! Lots of light, it's protected. It looks pretty good. I think that's a pretty nice fix. So there it is, and I'm pretty happy with the results. I even have a few extra parts. I'll probably use them on one of my other shelves. These do make it a lot handier to use those rolls of strip LEDs, especially if they were in new condition and you didn't have to deal with that adhesive. This would have went a lot faster. Also, these printed parts, they're pretty handy for other wires. You can zip tie to them when they have the lights in them if you need to. And I found that pretty useful in this situation. 
So thanks to the Voron team for the designs, as well as these parts, even though it wasn't its intended purpose, it did work out really well for me. Hopefully you found this video fun. That's it for today, and I'll see you really soon on the next one.